Well, today we're going to be working on this uh, Chevy Caprice again. We're going to be doing front wheel bearings. Alright, so we got this uh, tire off. Um, really, it was pretty easy. Only four lug nuts on. The uh, lock nuts I had to have the dealer take off because I didn't have the key. So I just had him leave them off. I'll have to go pick up a lug nut to replace it with. A lot of times you can just repack these wheel bearings and put them back in or just tighten up the nut a little bit. Um, could be all this one even needs. While you're in here, you want to check out your brakes. You know. Huh. That's weird. Anyway, so the rotor looks good. Feels good on the front and back side. Um, um, we're gonna have to take this caliper off now the way so we can get this rotor off So once I get this caliper off then I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you guys what we're doing next All right, well, we got the brake caliper off And got it hanging up here by a bungee cord so it don't go nowhere um, These are the brake pads here, and they really don't look too bad One thing I'm noticing and I ain't so sure about is uh, well these are the pins that hold these pads in and uh they're significantly smaller than these holes. And, you know, I heard this other rat rattle in there. And I think that might have been the other rattle I was hearing. So, I'm going to take those to the parts house with me. And, uh, see what a new set looks like. See if that hole's the same. Take these pins with me. Maybe it's fine. I mean, they're not going to go anywhere because they're really held in by the uh, shape of the caliper. And these little notches up here on the top. I mean, that's really what keeps them in place. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's something else. So we got this out of the way. Now we have to remove this cap. And you do that just by slipping a flathead screwdriver down here underneath the edge and walking it all the way around, and it'll slowly pull this cap off. So this here has a little cotta pen that's right here, bent over the front. It's hard to tell with all the grease. Um, honey, would you have me a blue towel? One or two. Just one. Please. Thank you. Alright, so let me wipe off some of this here. There you can see that pin a little bit better. So we're going to pull this pin out. And that will let us uh, pull the pin out from right here. And we'll get this nut loose. And this whole rotor and bearings and everything else will just come right off. Then we'll get it cleaned up and we'll see what we're looking at. So I got this pin out. It was pretty simple, like I said. Um, I just you know, grabbed a hold of it with uh, some handle nose pliers. And, you know, smack it a couple times, came right out, no problem. Um, so, you know, go ahead and back this off here. I'll pull this rotor off. I thought it would be. Alright, so right there's the front bearing. You know, like a grease seal thing. We'll get all these parts cleaned up and uh you know. Still in one piece looks like, so we'll get them cleaned up, see what they look like. See how bad it was. We'll get the back ones pulled out. Alright, so got this rotor out, got the grease cleaned up off of it. I was looking at these bearings. You know, these things, they're still, these are the ones that came out of it. They're still pretty nice and tight. Um, you know, there's no discoloration on them, no visible signs of wear. A little bit of dirt. It got some dirt on it. Now it's all now it's all messed up. Oh god. So these were the seals. The seals really weren't in that bad of shape, but those I got new ones on. They're not like the old ones, so I'm not using these. 
so the one edge isn't the same. So, but I'm gonna put new seals in, but I think I'm just gonna repack these and uh, take these back, get my money back. Just a couple bucks, but still. Um, it's hard to see in here, but the inner race is in good shape. Doesn't have any grooving on it, doesn't have any discoloration from heat. Um, same thing on the back side. I was looking at it, and I was got some grease back on it, but you know, the race seems fine. So, I'm going to try to show you guys how to repack this. Uh, probably have to prop this phone up or something. A um, little bit of a trick to it, to do it right. So, let me go get my grease and uh, show you how you repack a bearing. Alright, so, found a little bit of a way to do this. Kills my back a little bit. So, you got your bearing here. And you're just going to take this grease and we'll work it down into the edge. And it should start coming out. Of the bearing surfaces like that you know you're gonna keep doing that until until it comes out the other side I'm not talking about the center here and you just rotate it around and keep doing that these gloves are useless Anyway, yeah, this is just pointless to try to film this. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's how you do that. All right, well, we got this rotor here all cleaned up. And it's a little hard to tell, but we got as much of this grease here kind of as we can out of here. We don't want the dirty old grease with debris and grit and anything to interfere with the new grease. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to take some grease and just kind of wipe it on the bearing races a little bit. Little pre lube. Just a little bit on there, right? We're also gonna we're gonna shove this full of grease too. I just I I, I like grease. I'm gonna fill it full of grease and uh, put these bearings in. And uh, well, right now here I'm gonna show you how you put this bearing in. So got it all packed. Um, it's a little hard to show you guys how you pack them, but. There's a quick, efficient way to do it, pretty much like I showed you on the film. It's just kind of hard to do it while filming. But drop that in there, nice and square. And uh, go get this new seal. I'll show you how we're going to put the seal in. So. Here's our new seal. You know, this here is the outside, this is the inside. Um, just kind of get it lined up. Should be able to pretty much get it started with by your hand, All right? Then we're gonna take this block of wood, set it on top. This block of wood is gonna make it so, um, you know, you're applying even pressure all the way around it. You don't want it to go in twisted or cattywampus. Um, yeah. All right, well, like I said, that didn't take but just a second. So we got that in there. It's tapped down nice and flush. should be flush with the surface here, right? I'll put a little grease around this seal here, too, make it slip on easier. Um, you do have to have this bearing in first because you can't put it in through that, you know, through this inner seal. Um, so make sure you have your bearing in and everything's packed and cleaned up and pretty much ready to install before you put the seal in. Um... Now we're going to take it to the car and finish filling up the inside of this hub here with grease and put the inner bearing on and uh, then we'll kind of show you how how you get these tightened down and the right way to, you know, my right way to do it anyway. And um, yeah, so we'll finish this job up. won't take too, long, too much longer. All right, well, got this, uh, I'm actually on the other side here now, but got this spindle here cleaned up. And uh, got the threads cleaned out. Wipe this uh, surface here off, right? Because this is where that oil seal is going to seal up to. So you don't want no grime or grunk there. Another note: while you got this tire and uh, you know brake assembly off and out of the way, not the brakes were in the way, but why don't you take this time to go ahead and grease your upper ball joint? 
just because it's really a pain to get to that when uh you know when the tire's on you know this one here i just greased recently um but i'll probably go ahead and give it another squirt grease the whole front end up it's just kind of good preventative maintenance so we got this here got this rotor got the new bearings in it um got the new oil seal on the back side so i showed you guys how to put those in um you know block of wood makes a good special tool for this and kind of cleaned it up but uh yeah so this is going to work for now we're going to put these back on you know you can see these rotors aren't in too bad a shape and uh probably get another year out of them however long it takes to finish eating up these pads i'm not putting new pads on i'm going to put the same ones back on There's still plenty of life in them um we'll see if this this helps fix our problem so i'm gonna get this rotor put up in place i only got one free hand and uh one of these days i'll get me a gopro and strap it to my forehead or something make it easier but i'll get this in here and then i'll show you how we adjust the uh tension that you know the the spindle nut All right, so got this back on. All I've done is kind of shove that on there. It kind of slipped right into place, and then it's gonna, you'll feel that rear seal seat in. Um, you know, sometimes you'll think you have it on there, and then it slides back another quarter inch for you. But it's on there, it went on nice and smooth. Um, this is on hand tight, and I'm gonna show you how, how we tighten these and get the adjustment right. So if you look in the book, it's gonna say put a torque wrench on it and torque it down to 12 foot pounds. This is my torque wrench today, right? So, and all we're gonna do is, well, we're gonna get it to fit it first of all. All right, we're gonna put this on there. And, I don't have enough hands. All right, then we're gonna tighten it, about 12 foot pounds while rotating it All right and what this is doing is it's seating those bearings it's going to get any debris or anything out uh, make sure that they're well seated on the races All right and you want to make sure that this is turning nice and smooth that it's not you're feeling gritty or um, you know that there's any uneven resistance you know it should be about the same resistance all the way through All right and uh hi dog every time i talk he thinks i'm talking to somebody I go, who's here ain't nobody here anyway so um you know tight 12 foot pounds it's not very much so you know you get it about about where you want it you know and uh I kind of know about what 12 foot pounds feels like. All right. And then once you got it where, where it's going to be, then you back it off. Quarter of a turn. All right. Continue to spin it. All right. And then you tighten it. Hand tight. It literally says hand tight in the book. Um, it says without using any tools at all, get it back hand tight, which is about that. There should be absolutely no play. All right? Get it lined up with a hole, um, which we are. We're pretty much dead lined up on it. And you put your pin back in. Um, now, if you have them, use new pins. You don't want to put old ones back in. Uh, the ones I took out really are fine. I'm actually going to put them back in, as you've seen. I'm doing a lot of stuff that you know you probably shouldn't place but it's supposed to be just a quick fix on this car so we're gonna put this pin back in and uh, put the brakes back on and uh, I'll show you a little bit of preventative maintenance on that when we get there all right well we got this back on so uh, pack that full of grease um, put a little extra on the inside in between the bearings actually I put quite a bit extra in there and that's nice and tight good resistance no shake 
no rattle much much better than it was so I did go ahead and grease the supper ball joint again um, yeah I was sitting there staring at it didn't have anything better to do with my time so next we're gonna put these brakes back on so but one thing I wanted to show you is on these calipers here you got this little slider hole right and it's got these pins these pins that go they go through that hole right there and that's what locks your brake pads into place in that hole and um, kind of locks the caliper assembly onto the frame of this rotor but one thing we want to do is we want to grease this pin up right and that's going to allow the caliper to slide back and forth on the housing right here right because these these actually thread in not to the uh, caliper but they thread in here on the back of the car so these pins are stationary and the caliper has to be able to move as the pads wear so a lot of people sometimes will forget to grease these up and um, you know then your brakes start seizing and binding you get uneven pad wear all kinds of problems so I'm not going to use my good bearing grease I actually got some of this here um, it's salvaged grease I got out of a big barrel but it is high temp bearing grease um, it'll do the job for what we're using it for. Um, another thing I wanted to tell you, a lot of these GMs here have this big hex head, um, you know, bolt that holds these brakes together. Um, now I got the right tool here. You know, you can get these at your local parts houses. Um, don't know what size of Allen head that really is, but you can look on their shelf and they have, you know, brake caliper removal tool. And, uh, it's not just for these. I've used it on a lot of cars. This one's really old. It's got a lot of miles on it. Um, but pretty hard to do it because most people don't have an Allen, Allen wrench that big in their, in their uh, toolbox. So make sure you got one of those before you try. You don't want to jack nothing up. So I'll get these greased up here and get these slid back on the place. I'm going to show you what we did. Well, there you go. Pretty much just that simple. Uh, boy, that sunlight's really coming in bright, so kind of messing with the filming. But these were the pins here we put in. You know, it bolts in back there. I got them all greased up here because they have to slide right here. Like this here, this slips back and forth. And same thing with this pad that's on it. It goes through it. And that'll just kind of keep it from binding up in the future. Um, not that it was bound already, but it didn't have any grease on it. So that's on there. We torque that down. Um, it's just tight. I don't know what the numbers are on it. Um, now you just pretty much put this tire back on and go finish up the other side and we'll be done.